Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ara, and today we are back working in the captain's quarters. And as you saw from the title of this video, I'm gonna be working on the captain's desk. What you can see here is me kind of drafting out what I want. And the chair you see there was actually made by another miniaturist named Sean who runs the channel Dolphin Magic Pro. I will leave both a link to the video of him creating the chair and a link to his channel. And I'll tell you a little bit more about him later, but he was so, so kind to create and send this chair to me specifically for this project. The design that I'm going for is something I saw in this picture. I really liked the angled look of the desk, even though this is kind of a cartoony type captain's quarters uh, image. I think it's from maybe a game, um, but I really liked the slanted look. And then I went ahead and looked up some other photographs of 17th century furniture and took some of the design features for this desk from those actual items from that time period. I also wanted to make sure that the captain had real working drawers because this is supposed to be the desk where he has um, a lot of his work. Maybe he is creating some of his model ships, which is going to be the focus down below. So I wanted to make sure that he had plenty of room to store supplies and maybe just have things hanging out of the desk drawers in the final look of the captain's quarters. So I'm going to be providing this pattern in the description box below. The shapes for the desk are simple enough that you can cut them by hand. So if you do not have a um, maker machine or um, a laser cutter, this is what I'm using right here. This is all cut from 16th inch mat board to create a 12 scale piece. Um, but you can cut these items by hand. And so I do provide the pattern in PDF form and SVG form. The only thing that might be a little difficult is the cardstock page um, but I do encourage you even if you don't have a cutting machine you can um, try to cut them by hand uh, it's not impossible just takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of time you also don't necessarily have to add this part on the desk. The desk will still work without these really intricate cardstock pieces. Also, I know that sometimes places that sell scrapbook paper will have really intricate cut papers. And so you could take something from that. It won't be exactly like this, but it'll give that very intricately scrolled look to the side of your desk. Once I had all the pieces cut, I just went ahead and organized them in the order I felt like I was going to be using them. And um, I do have the letters on the pieces on the pattern. If you decide to try and follow this tutorial, you will see I leave a note that says, I highly suggest putting the letters on the pieces. This kind of helps you know which direction the pieces get glued together. I'm gonna be using tacky glue to attach all of my pieces together. First of all, I'm gonna take my two A pieces and add tacky glue to the back of one of them. And I'm going to be gluing these pieces together um, just straight on. And this is to give it a double thickness. Because this is one of the main walls of the desk, I really want it to be strong. I wanna make sure to line this up as best as possible so that there is no overhang. But if there is, I can always use some sandpaper to sand it down. Now I'm gonna take one of the pieces marked D and I'm going to be gluing that to the face of A. All I do is put a line on one of the shorter sides of piece D and just glue it on. And this is how it looks once it is glued on. So it's just sticking straight off the front towards the what will be the back of the desk. Now I'm gonna take a piece marked F. You wanna make sure that the letter F is towards the top of this piece, and it is actually angled, so this piece is really important that you get it on the correct way. There's four pieces marked F. Each one is going to make up the side of the desk pieces. So this piece marked F is going underneath D and again on the face of A. And here you can see it kind of nuzzled up into that corner. Next, I'm gonna take part marked C. This is going to form the bottom of this little box area that we're creating. And it is going to go again on the face of A and be glued underneath the piece that we just put in marked F. So now we have the bottom of this box that we're creating. 
Now you're going to take another F piece and this is going to create the final side of this and this box area that we're creating is what's going to house the drawers on either side of the desk. So I'm going to put glue on all three sides because this is going to finish off that area. And this is a little bit trickier because you're having to fit it in there, but just kind of keep working with it until it fits and it should fit in there perfectly, of course, depending on how um, the cuts went when we, you were making the pieces. Now I need to do the exact same thing, but on the opposite side um, because I want both sides to match. And this is how it should look when you have both sides of the desk completed. Now the next pieces that need to go in are the pieces marked E. You will see that they are kind of mirrored to each other, but before they actually go in, they should fit perfectly on the front of these two boxes. Um, yeah, there's a lip overhang for uh, on D and C, so it should fit right in there perfectly. But before I put them in with glue, I need to add pieces P and Q to the backs of both of these pieces. Q is going to go right underneath the top opening for the drawer. And this is what the drawer is going to sit on whenever it's inserted into the desk so that it doesn't slump um, down into the desk. This is kind of an interior support. So I want to glue piece Q right underneath the top opening on part E. Again, this is on the back of part E. And I want to make sure that it's as perpendicular to E as possible. Just try and keep those angles 90 degrees as best as you can. And then the piece marked P is going to do the same thing, but right underneath the lower drawer opening. Once I have those pieces dry and I feel like they're as straight as I can get them, I'm going to add glue to all the pieces that are going to touch the inside of the desk and just slide it in straight and then push part E into place, making sure that everything is flush. And then I just took a paintbrush if I felt like any of the pieces were not right like in place where they needed to be, I could just kind of push them down a little bit until I felt like they were um, as straight as possible so that they supported the drawers the best that they could. To make the actual desktop, I'm going to take both pieces that are marked B and glue them together. This is again going to give me that double strength and double layer piece that's going to help my desk be a really strong piece of furniture. I'm going to line them up as best as possible just like we did for pieces A. And um, these I did not get perfectly lined up so I do end up sanding them a bit. Now I can take some glue and add them to the top of the parts marked D on both sides of the desk. And then I also want to make sure and add glue to that very thin long piece on top of A, every single part that's going to touch the desktop. And then I flipped it over and centered it on the bottom of part B. And this we can actually kind of see the desk coming together. We can see the shape of what it's going to look like at this point. Now I'm going to construct the drawers. The top two drawers need parts H, M, O, and N, and the bottom two drawers need the parts marked J, K, L, and G. So I'm going to put these together one at a time so you can clearly see how they go together. So to make one drawer, I need H, M, two O's, and an N. Again, this is going to make one of the top drawers. I'm going to take part in, put glue to the bottom of it, and then center it on the very back end of part M. Here you can see how it is centered on the back so that I have a 16th inch on either side of part N. Then I can add O on either side of part N so that it lines up and it is slightly slanted because the drawer opening is slanted so keep that in mind. Now I do want to make sure that my slanted drawer front lines up with my slanted part N and this one didn't so I'd actually grabbed the wrong one. So as you can see it slants off to the left on part N so I need to make sure that I pick up part H that also slants off to the left. And um, 
because the desk itself is slanted, you really have to pay attention to this or you're going to get really flustered with these drawers. I'm just going to add glue to the very end of the drawer opening and then I'm going to flip part H over so that I can glue this centered onto the back. I want to make sure it's as centered as possible because we want it to be centered once the drawer goes into the front of the desk. So this is how it fits in and um, if you're hand cutting these pieces you may have to sand down your drawer openings just a little bit um, so keep that in mind. Now I'm going to make the other side and here you can see these drawers actually fit pretty well. Like I said if you feel like they're not going in very well you can sand the drawers themselves and the openings. Now to make the bottom drawers you're going to need one part G one part K, two L's, and a J. And again, I made sure the slants on K and G matched. This one is going to go together just like the upper drawers. They're just different size pieces because the drawer is um, a little bit taller and a little bit more narrow. I'm gonna center part K on the back of piece J, and then I'm gonna add the L pieces to either side. Again, making sure that I pay attention to those slants and make sure I have the correct drawer front for the correct drawer. I'm gonna flip part G over, and then again, center the uh, drawer body that we just created onto the back of part G. So the drawers are pretty simple to put together. I really like this design and I'm hoping to go back to some of my other designs in the past and add real working drawers because they're not too difficult to put together. I found that this one fits a little snugger so you might have to do a little bit more sanding on the G drawers. So now that we have the main body of the desk put together, we're going to add some of the cardstock pieces. So I have two, actually I have four kind of um, rectangle decorative rectangle pieces the two biggest go on the sides and the two slightly smaller ones go on the front on either side of the archway so I'm just going to show you how I lay them out again these pieces are not necessary to building this desk so if you don't like this particular design you don't like how fancy it is or you want a different design um, you can use these as ways to cut out patterns to put that onto your desk but you don't necessarily have to use these in order to create the desk. Now I went ahead and glued on the side pieces and I realized that I did not need um, these extra overhangs so if you do decide to use these you may have to cut off the overhangs on the sides because um, I didn't go back and change that in my file. But the pieces that go on the front, the two smaller pieces, you definitely want to leave those overhangs on there because they will help you line up the other um, pieces that go on next. There's kind of a lot of details that go in here. Now there's going to be four slightly um, angled rectangle pieces that are on the cardstock sheet and these guys are going on the front drawers and this again is another little detail you don't have to do it if you want planar drawers then you don't have to add these pieces but it does give just a little bit of um, more detail to the drawer to make it look like a more finished um, piece. Now I'm going to be adding some quarter inch trim pieces around the bottom part of the desk and a little bit around the top. I'm going to start with piece W and those pieces go on the inside of the desk, kind of where the legs would be the opening for the chair. I'm going to go ahead and glue those in. There's one for each side and then part V is going to go on the face of E. So you can see how it goes on the front there. And then on the side we're going to use the two S's and two R's. The R's actually go on top and the S's go on the bottom. Make sure to pay attention to the angles because the angles match which side of the desk it needs to go on. So I'm just going to line those up in the corner and um, you'll kind of see it looks like the trim wraps around the desk. Um, that's what I was going for. If you don't have these cardstock pieces on there, you're just going to glue it straight onto the desk itself. So we have two S's on the bottom and then the two R's go up in the corner to complete this look on each side. Okay. 
I also have piece I, which I kind of skipped over previously, but this piece goes across the entire back of the desk over the opening where the chair would go in, and it has kind of a little um, scrolled opening uh, just to give it a little bit more detail. And now that we have the trim pieces on the top and the bottom, you can kind of see how the drawers fit in and everything looks like it should is made to be there, I think at least. <laughs> So now we're going to put the trim pieces on the front. The U's go on the inside corners and the T's go on the outside corners because the U's have an angle on the or don't have an angle on the side and the T's do have an angle on the side. So you have to pay attention to that. You may have to flip over some of your T pieces in order to get them to line up with the angles, but that's that's okay, it won't affect anything. So I'm just gonna glue all my U's onto the uh, rectangle corners you see on the sides, and then I added my T's to the outside corners. So the ones that you can't see the letter on them, they're just T's that were flipped upside down. Any place that I feel I have a little bit of an overhang or something didn't perfectly glue, I'm going to take a file and just sand it down very gently. Because this is made out of matte board, I am using, uh, I'm just being very, very gentle. A lot of this can actually be cut from 16th inch wood if you prefer to work in wood, but I just, I always go for matte board. Now I'm going to take some of my dollar store spackle and anywhere there might be a gap, I am going to fill that in with spackle and let that dry and then re-sand it. This always just helps, you know, cause in, when you're working in miniature, little bitty gaps and little bitty mistakes really show up. And so this just helps to fill in any mistakes I might've made along the way. Now it's time to use the rest of these little bitty pieces from the cardstock page. All of the pieces marked with letters are going to be glued on top of the pieces we already glued on with letters. And these pieces are going on top of the longer pieces of trim. So these go, the ones with the little pointed corners go on top of the piece marked I. And then I just glue those down. It goes on either side of the opening. And then the shorter rectangly pieces go on top of V, and then the ones that are slightly longer go on top of W. So you can just add those on top. Again, these are optional. They won't change the functionality of your desk. Here you can see all the little cardstock pieces glued onto their corresponding mat board pieces. And yeah, so I think it just gives it just a little bit more detail. Once that's done, I can add some of the kind of 17th century looking rosettes to the circle. And um, I added a circle piece that was on the cardstock paper. There is a large flower looking shape, a smaller flower looking shape, and then a little bitty circle that goes in the center. And I got this idea from one of the 17th century pieces that I was looking at where it had this like four petaled rosette looking shape. And there should be enough to do the two on the front of the desk and then also the two on the side of the desk that should um, complete your rosettes. And they're really fun to put on there, I think. Now, in order to make sure that none of this um, pops up or scrunches once I start painting it, I am going to add super glue to all of the edges. And I, I'd never really tried this before, but it worked really, really well. What I didn't realize is that the super glue kind of has a 3D effect to it if you don't get it really, really flat. And um, it ended up like you could see the lines in the super glue, but to me, I think it looked more like it was carved. It looked like it was actually hand carved on the side of the desk. So I ended up liking the look. This is not a necessary step, but I wanted to make sure that none of that paper was gonna pop up. 
Now I did 3D print some legs for this desk because it had a very specific look I was going for. This is the first time I have tried this and I know I can't put a 3D print in the PDF file of this pattern for you, but you can use um, dowel rods or you can use um, like those ornate uh, dowels you can get for dollhouse stair railings for the legs of your desk. Um, you can also carve your own legs. I know there's um, somewhere out there there's tutorials for carving your own legs, but I couldn't help but um, try 3D printing some of these legs. So I went ahead and drilled holes in all four corners of both sides of the desk, and then I added the chair, the desk legs in there. Now, back to this chair that Sean made. Again, I'm putting the link to his channel below. Go check out his channel. He works with wood and does amazing things. He started out building miniatures for his wife's dollhouse, and I think now he's kind of caught the bug. <laughs> um, he's starting a project. I think it's a... Um, it's going to be a steampunk project and he's just kind of getting started on it. He started building the walls. So if you enjoy following my projects, make sure you go over to his channel, subscribe so you can get in on following his project that's coming up. He's a really awesome guy. I know you'll love his channel. Now I did get his permission to do um, a few things to the chair to kind of marry the two pieces together. He was awesome and um, asked if he could make something for the captain's quarters and we came up with him um, working on the chair and he did an amazing job. And I just wanted to add um, just a little bit of that same detailing that was on the desk to the chair. He left it unfinished for me so I could paint them at the same time. But all I did was add one of those little um, rosettes and a little detailing to the um, like the neck, neck support thing on the back of the chair. And if you want to see how the chair was made, um, there is, I will link that video below too. I'll make sure and link Sean's channel and the chair video specifically so you can check it out. So now I'm putting a base coat of brown on both the desk and the chair and I did realize that it took quite a bit to cover up the super glue. So if you do decide to use super glue on yours, make sure that you are patient with it. It's going to take a few coats of paint to cover that up as opposed to painting straight onto the mat board. I did realize as I was doing this that everything that I've created for the captain's quarters has been painted brown. Everything is brown, but from all the reference photos I've been looking at of actual captain's quarters, everything is brown. So I think a lot of the color pops and um, things that are going to actually bring life to this piece are not going to be walls or furniture. It is going to be a lot of the accessories that bring color and um, just a little bit of variation into this project. Now that I had all my coats of brown dry and finished, I'm adding some aging. This is supposed to be a very old ship with some old furniture on it. So I'm using some watered down black acrylic paint and I'm just going to be brushing that on and all that paint is going to kind of settle in the creases and it's going to highlight the detailing on the sides of the desk. I also wanted to add a highlight because this is supposed to be something that was at sea for many years and so I used some watered down uh, cream colored paint and a q-tip and I'm just going to like I started out lightly at first and then then I accidentally added more but I want it to look like a desk that's kind of um, been exposed to salt water and sea water um, and so that's why I wanted to add some highlights I do kind of dull it down a little bit later but I didn't want it to just be brown and black. I wanted to add some highlights to the desk as well. Of course, if you make your own desk, you can paint it whatever color you like. You can keep it just brown if you like the really rich chocolatey brown look. I wanted to make sure, of course, I love aging things, but I wanted to make sure it looked like it had um, been through some things probably. <laughs> 
And here's how the desk looks with the drawers in. Here's how the front looks all aged and everything. Um, I didn't do a ton to the top of the desk because I will be putting things on it. Here's Sean's chair and I aged it in the same manner that I did for the desk and I really think that they look like a matched set. Like I would totally imagine that these two guys go together. Now I need to use my final pieces that are on my cardstock page to create handles. Uh, I need eight of these little shapes and I'm going to be gluing them on top of each other to create four handles. So I'm just using a toothpick to add some glue and then I'm just going to glue two pieces together. While the glue is drying I'm going to bend them into the shape that I want which is kind of a U shape and this is what's going to create the handle. I'm going to use the same method I always use to create an old metallic look and um, I'm just going to do a base coat of black acrylic paint and then I'm going to do a top coat of a metallic silver and this is going to create kind of a dark silvery metal. I did think I also could have used gold and maybe that would have been more appropriate, I'm not sure, but I always just default to silver. But this is how they look once I've got them painted. And I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the kind of petally pieces that are on the sides of the handle and carefully with tweezers try to center them on each of the drawer fronts. Once they're attached, I can um, go ahead and age them. I want to age the handles themselves and I also want to age any place where they are touching the drawer fronts because that's where they would have received the most wear from someone constantly touching the drawers in that place. And of course, this is up to your discretion, whatever you want your drawer handles to look like. So that's pretty much it for the captain's desk. And I want to make sure to say a big thank you to Sean for sending me the chair for the captain. Um, again, go make sure and check out all his links below. Um, I think it looks awesome. I'm so excited. This is maybe one of my favorite pieces of furniture that I've ever made. If you decide to make one too, make sure you tag me on Instagram at Bentley House Minis. I always love seeing what you guys create and how you change up my patterns to make them your own. I have already had someone ask me if this is going to be a kit that I will put out in the future and the answer is yes and I do hope to have my first kits coming out in January that is my goal and I think that will be a really fun way to get miniatures to you guys because it will come with the mat board cut it will come with the cardstock cut it will come with the 3d printed legs it will come with everything you need except for paint and glue uh, to put these miniatures together and um, Anyway, I'm really excited about it, so keep an eye out for that in the new year. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, hoping there will be another Captain's Quarters video next week if everything goes to plan. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!